happiness is a choice. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well today. I want to jump on and do a quick um, chat on what kind of dropped in today. Um, and of course, we're moving forward. And I don't really do a whole lot, you know, with um, talking about the situations in the world, uh, politics. Uh, sometimes I'll do some stuff on religion, but if it's based on the topic of what I need to get across, I'll mention it. Um, but I don't really go down the rabbit hole of that, who's this, who's that, who's right, who's wrong. But of course, we're going in a direction that there's going to be, you know, obviously a lot of upheaval and it's already started, it has been happening, obviously. And it's an adjustment. It's not just the timeline period as like instant manifestation because there is none here on this level in this realm, right? And so as we know, manifesting takes time because we do live in this reality of time, which is separation. So it does take a lag. There is a lag time for everything. And so the momentum happens and then um, the evolution of it, which is the manifestation. So utilizing that in the concept, you know, as we're coming to this point where the upcoming elections, you know, it's been manifesting over time, uh, being created to, to be representative at the point where we do uh, choose, right? And so everything is based on choice. So whether that is we're choosing of either side or if we're allowing ourselves to be open and to see that we can actually call to action having the voices of people to speak out and say that we want other options, right? Because there are other candidates who are running, but they're wanting to keep it just between the two. So we do have options, right? But I don't really want to go down that rabbit hole because um, a lot of people aren't willing to see it and they're not willing to step out of it for fear reasons or whatever their beliefs are because they've been so ingrained in the two parties, not outside. But there are others, and you can call as of being the people uh, that you want it to be an open voting system, right? But because we've been limited to just these two parties for a long time, a lot of people aren't aware of that and they can't see it and because it's not in their belief systems, it doesn't exist, right? And so everything is on a timeline, but the existence of it is what's manifesting. So it takes time, right? And so the evolution of our experience, what we are creating, not just what's going on in the world, um, but in our personal lives. Um, so this applies to the macro and the micro, you know, choice is what we have. And so even in the darkest days and so I feel like that's why they're wanting me to do this talk is that we always have choice no matter what our external situation is that's arising in the moment as we are moving forward in this time um, and it's basically just the conversion you know of external situations uh, that we're experiencing now as time changes we're evolving and it's really due to the course of what we're choosing Right? because the manifestation of those um, on the macro is actually a reflection of the micro <laughs> and vice versa. So if the collective is more geared towards one side than the other, you know, that's going to be more the majority, right? And so you can see that when we do have, you know, I am for this or I'm for that, and you have like these splitting sides uh, you can see what is in support of that and support of that not just because that's actually what you're wanting but because you're in alignment with it right <laughs> and so what are you in alignment with um you know those are your external situations so say one of the um candidates they're going to support and they're going to be aligned um, with the population that is aligned to that and i'm not talking about um you know, certain things that we're wanting to create. 
um, you know, I want more educational finances or whatever it is, you know, or to forgive loans. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about <laughs> the energy behind it, the intention, um, because we all know there's a lot of falsehood, you know, in that paradigm, if you will, um, that it's existing as. And so we may just vote somebody because we like them, you know, not really what they stand for. So it's a time to be true um, to ourselves and to really see what we're voting for and not just voting for things like that um, just because they're entertaining. <laughs> you know, there's a lot going on um, that is going to change the way that we exist on, uh, you know, on a lot of different levels um, and that's going to affect everybody, right? So it's just a time to be true to yourselves. And I don't want to go into being serious, but um, it is definitely a time to be true, right? And to kind of wipe away the veil. That's why part of the awakening is happening right now. And one party is getting people to really see that because they are, that's what they're there for, right? Is to really bring this stuff within you and so you can see it. Um, and of course, of course, that comes down to choice, right? So everything is choice, what you're choosing. And so no matter whichever way it ends up going, um, your choice, what they wanted me to kind of talk about is like, don't base your happiness um, or your worth or value based on your external circumstances. And with us going forward, you know, it's going to be important to no matter what's happening, what's going on, because, you know, you may be... Um, influenced or I want to say experiencing a lot of things in the external world versus the inner world but also in the inner world because it's going to bring up a lot of stuff within you to see uh, and then also with that happening you know we always get to choose our joy and bliss over choosing our suffering right and that's our external situations you know our circumstances this can also bleed into just everyday stuff, right? And so, um, but as we're moving forward, you know, as far as with the elections, you know, just remember to stay true to yourself, what it is that you truly want to see for the best for everybody in the world, right? And so just being true to yourself and then choosing, um, you know, the best, uh, but also from that external situation, looking at your own internal life, what is coming up for you to see Right? and being true to yourself, choosing love, happiness, joy, and bliss, right? Versus uh, the conflict, the opposite of it, which is, <laughs> you know, the shadow aspect, which we all have the uh, capability and ability to be um, if we are pushed enough to be, um, or it's been our external situations or programming as far as the shadow aspects of ourselves uh, that we never really like to look at, but we always like to make somebody else out to be the one who is the external, <laughs> the shadow of ourselves, which is the reflection. And so it basically serves itself to, to know that you have all the options that you could ever possibly have, um, and that is choice. So whatever we are choosing is what we are going to be receiving <laughs> uh, from that point of view. But as far as, you know, the elections and everything coming up is just have that view of you know what am, what am i choosing who am i choosing for and why am i choosing it right and don't just choose it just because somebody looks good on paper you know do your research find out what are your other other options um in choosing right but at the same time the other part of the the message for today is like you know a lot of times we are just in external situations um where maybe we're not happy and then we get into this depression or this woe or the suffering state of being and then we uh, have coping skills and then we end up you know having other issues because of our coping skills are not good <laughs> you know with, with external situations that we're seeing arising in our lifetime but it is the passing through the time um of the manifestation process. So just because you don't have it yet doesn't mean you're not worthy of it and it doesn't mean you're not good enough in manifesting. It just means it's not time yet, right? And everything has a perfect timeline, which is not by our time, but by the time that the universe is bringing it to you and source is creating it for you. 
So everything has a part and a role in play in it. And so your external situation shouldn't affect your inner world, right? Your inner world, because we're focused outwardly, doesn't mean that that's how it should be. We shouldn't be externally unhappy just because our world outside isn't the way we want it to be. We can't control the outer world unless we're doing our inner world first, right? And so we have to turn that inward. And so reflecting on our inner version, our inner world, and then allowing that to be the outer experience, right? And so if we can do that, we can be in a blissful space no matter what your situation is, right? It's a state of mind, right? And so that's why there's no heaven or hell. It's a state of mind. It's either you're in bliss or you're in suffering, right? Um, and I, didn't, I don't really keep up on the Pope or anything like that, but also there was this... Um, verbalization from the Pope and he has said that there is no actual external hell it's just a state of mind it's your your being where you are and so um, you know I don't know what that all existed as because I didn't watch it but I seen like a headline somewhere um, that he actually came out and said it and so you know it, it is true right and it's the religions everything's breaking down you know the religions want to keep you in this um, belief and state, you know, so that way you are going to them. It's a business, right? And so again, using the religion in that context. But um, as far as, you know, having your external situations, whether it's going to be what we're going through coming up here, because it's going to be a rough road, um, obviously. Uh, we've already seen, you know, some of it, and it's been going on for this whole time. And they talk about the agenda uh, 2025. Um, and again, I don't get into politics uh, so much, but I kind of I do have an awareness of what's going on because I don't want to add energy to it, right? Um, and you know, I've I've always kind of been that way, um, staying away for <laughs> as much as I can out of politics or religions and things like that. I mean, every now and then I kind of take a look, you know, just to see what's going on in that world, you know, opening the curtain and then closing it because <laughs> I don't like to live in a state of of those dramas, right? And so I have control over my space, right? And I choose uh, based on where I am. And I mean, I get into those situations where I kind of am, okay, if I'm not at a job that I don't like, you know, you, you can get down. And I've been, you know, part of that. It's like, it, it brings you down. So I know what, you know, what that feels like, you know, or where you're living, if you're not happy where you're living, um, your job, if you're going to school or something doesn't work out, you don't get the job that you want. We kind of have this inner turmoil, right? But we shouldn't let the external situation determine our inner world, right? Our inner world should be like status quo, right? And it's not to say not to enjoy life, or to have the, you know, because we do go through the ups and flow of life, the ups and downs. And so the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the upwards is, and I'll read you a little bit about what, what was said here on that, because um, it's part of the channeling drop in this morning, but we do go through it. And it's like, no matter, you don't want your external situations to disrupt your inner world right? Because it, it can definitely do that. It can rock your world, <laughs> you know, and then in whatever you're choosing, if you're choosing to allow the world to have the power over you, or if you're allowing your own power within to be outside, then you're able to maneuver through life so much easier, right? And so the power of having your external situation um, non-affecting you inwardly is very powerful for you right if that makes sense and so what is what is the purpose of this video is basically you know don't let your external world influence or affect your inner being your your inner peace right and so whether that's on a um, micro level or uh, the macro level which of course a lot of us are going to be going through here and we already have been so a lot of is coming up and the more you feed into it and of course we want to know what's happening so we understand it but we don't want to put energy to it right so how do you do that you find a fine line right you kind of 
observe without putting your emotional attention to it, right? And because when you're affected internally, you're adding energy to it. It's when you have the emotions going on about a certain situation that you're creating more of it. But if you can be in what they say, be of the world, be in the world, but not of it, right? And so when we can expand on that on everything in all levels of our existence, whether that is the macro or the, the micro uh, evolution of what's happening, then we can kind of see where we're applying our energy to, right? And so the energy that we put as the emotional intelligence or energy to it is what facilitates the motion, the action portion, because we can observe something and just not have any attachment to it, right? And so then we're just an observer of, of the situation without emotional attachment. And so when we have the emotional attachment, that's what creates it, right? So that's in manifesting anything from the macro to the micro. And so when we're in that space, um, existing from that way, then we're allowing it to, to flow. We're moving it. We're being a part of it. We're attached to it. So that's where the emotions come up and the anger, the fighting, the suffering, you know, that all arises, right? But if we're emotionally um, unattached, and I'm not talking about, you know, don't be, un, you know, unattached or detachable from life because you are life. You can't be from that perspective, but your external situations that are arising that maybe you don't want to see or that you aren't wanting to be a part of, you know, with the, the turmoils that are going on and rising because in the, the risers, the fall, and the, t the channeling went through and it said, you know, the fall is not a bad thing, right? And, and churches talk about how the fall of the human being uh, because you're a sinner and all that bad negative stuff, that's to keep your vibration low, um, to disconnect you from your true source, right? And so they can be in there um, and be your God. So, and then you give your attention to, and energy to them because you've lost your connection, right? And so you follow them, not your true source. So what it says um, in the channeling is that basically the fall, because there's a rise, right, to the higher conscious and then the fall. And so what is the fall? And we go through that, that's ebb and flows of life, right? And so basically... When the fall comes, it's after the rise, which is the consciousness, right? And then you see everything and you become aware of it, which is what we're going through. We're becoming aware and knowing everything that's going on in this time frame in your, and in your life because it's bringing up stuff in your life too. Now it's not just for the macro, but it's for you too as well. And it, it's not always related to um, the elections, right? I'm talking about in your daily life. If you're at a job you don't like or you're at in a relationship you don't like, or your, um, whatever the, the situation may be, your external situation on any and all levels, right? And so we are rising up to see it, right? And that's the rise in consciousness, the awareness. It's existence, it's being, so you can see it, right? That's the rise in consciousness. And then the fall is to come back, right? And then to, to, not because you're a sinner, not because you're, um, we're in an evil place or this is hell or anything like that. You know, it's so we can make change. That's why you have the rise and fall, right? That's why you have the ebbs and flow of life, right? A lot of people think, oh, you know, well, the rising of consciousness means I'm getting there and I'm going to be better than other people. Actually, no, <laughs> it's not about that. It's so you can see the outward world, uh, the external situation, and the internal existence of who you are, what you're being in the world, how you're playing it out. And because when you become aware of it, then you can see how you're being in the world, and so you can make change, right? And so it's the external situation that is also reflecting back to you where you are on the micro and the um, macro level, right, which is a combination and accumulation of its all in totality on all levels, which is existence of your being, right? Where am I? What am I doing? How? Because until you bring light to it, you can't see it. Like you can't even see the body or who you are without the light because we don't exist like that, right, on the other side, right? We don't have the body. Right. And so we don't know ourselves from that point of view. Right. And so we come here to know ourselves from this point of view. 
to see it on that side of you, right? Because we take the knowledge and wisdom with us, right? And we pass it on. Um, and so it's not without the shadow that you can't see who you truly are, which is your own existence in the world, right? Because the shadow effect is a part of all of us and all everything that exists is, there's a, a shadow and then the light, right? And so it's not until you bring the light into the existence of where or what you're being in the world that's rising up to see it because you can't see it. You ever see like the iceberg, right? And so the unconscious darkness, the shadow, uh, and then the tip. So whenever you are rising up to uh, above the water, that's the consciousness arising, right? And so when you're there, you get to see, it's like looking up above the water, right? Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. We're seeing all this stuff going on. Wow, I didn't know that was happening. Oh, <laughs> you know, and you're coming awake to it. And it's like, wow, it's not just coming to awake and awareness of it, um, but it's the experience of understanding it, right? Where is this coming from? Understanding who I am, what's going on here. It's the change that's taken place for the love of it, right? And so when I say for the love of it, it's not to love it, right? But for the love of all, right? And so that there's a lot of emotion that's flowing from me in, in the moment here <laughs> um, that's coming up and arising because it is in... Um, it's what the soul wants to share, you know, and it's what's wanting to come through at this time. And so everything is on time, everything is divine, and everything is source's will. And so when you will let it, it will shine through. And during this time is what's happening, right? Because the direction we're heading in, depending on the opposing forces, um, of what is existing now in the shadows and allowing it to continue <clears throat> is not an option, right? And so <laughs> we are at a timeline that is very, um, let's just say, important to <laughs> trying to find the right words here. Uh, we're at a time that is very pivotal that we need to make change and so that's why you see everything arising that we're seeing it as and what is speaking to you from that point of view is your heart right and so where are you in your heart not your mind your feelings and your wounds and your hurt and your beliefs but your heart right and so the timeline right now is very important you know um what's going on and it's the shadows that are being shed across, across the board uh, that's rising up. And so when we have the rising, then we have the falling. And so the falling, again, like I said, is not a bad thing. It's not that you're an evil one, it's, you know, it's to come back down and do the work, right? You go up and you see, and then you come back into the existence and change, make change, right? Because what is awareness for? So you can see what isn't, you know, in in the good for not just for yourself but all, and then to make change, right? And that was in the channeling here uh, this morning. Um, again, sometimes I really don't know what I'm going to talk about until I get here and start and start writing and channeling. But I have some ideas on on it. But sometimes I do. But yeah, basically, it's allowing yourself to see everything as we're moving forward um, because it is definitely a, p a pivotal moment in time where the existence of what's going on in the shadows is not no longer accepted um, based on the other side um, of what's happening. And so because they can't come in and interfere, they can direct it um, to a certain point of what we are allowing um, in the existence and of our own creation. And it's a guidance from the other side, right? So what's happening now is allowing us to see everything, right? Because they're not coming in to do it for us. We can't have, the, that doesn't happen exist here. It's just not the law of existence, but they can help guide. And so what we're seeing is the rise of consciousness. And so a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, the rise of consciousness is me um, never, you know, it, you know, escaping, you know, because, well, how are you going to escape, right? Because you are part of all of it, all, all totality. There's nowhere to escape to. You're existing as itself, but just in form, right? And so what a lot of people are talking about, miscon 
misunderstanding is they're thinking, oh, well, I'm skipping my karma, but there's no karma, right? And so there's a lot of illusion delusion to kind of um, get through before you have the understanding of what I'm talking about on certain levels. But um, having the near-death experience and going through everything that I went through and then the channeling information, it just helps me to put things together and make sense of it. But from the point of you know, allowing our external situations to invade our peace, you know, we want to um, have that understanding what that is, you know, um, in the coming days, um, because it does uh, say in the channeling here, it's going to be a little bit of a rough patch. Uh, not that it hasn't already been in, in a lot of areas that it isn't already, but um, the external situations can very well um, impede how a lot of people are feeling and, you know, Again, kind of like COVID, you know, we went through that. A lot of people committed suicide. A lot of people were depressed, you know, isolated, lonely. Um, so just be mindful. It's a choice. It's a choice that um, to have that peace within yourself. And if you're feeling, you know, pulled into like the meat, turn off the TV, <laughs> meditate, you know, do something joyful, have some coping skills. For you prepare do some painting journaling writing art something creative get you out of that mindset nature um, healthy behaviors have things to go to work on and figure out what are coping skills you know set yourself up for um, success not failure right and to just be a victim of it there's no victim right but um, if you are prepared then you'll have the um, coping skills that you need to move, move through, right? And so um, to help maneuver that. But, um, and basically, yeah, that, I was going to read that, but it kind of just came up anyway. So it was just talking about the, um, the rise and the fall. And so with that, you know, like I said, we're going to be going through a lot of shifts and changes where we're going to see a lot of things. It's not going to be always a good thing and positive thing. But when we have the fall from the ebb and flow of the rising, Got some music going on in the background. Um, you know, I know a lot of people depict that, like I said, as far as the, the fall of the human consciousness, as we were coming back down into um, after the rise, right? We are going to have a fall, right? And that happens. Um, it's not that we're going, a lot of people will probably go back to sleep or whatever it is, um, but at that point, we have to use the, the rise um, for its purpose, right? Which is to see what needs to be made change and make change, right? Because if we rise and we have the consciousness awaken and then we have the fall, or... so a lot of times um, people will come back to where they are um, after the rise and the awareness and the aha, right? And then when the situation um, no longer exists because it had the rise and the fall, right? Everybody's all about making change and wanting to make change at the rise of it. But then when the fall comes and the ex external situation doesn't exist out anymore, they're like, oh, it's over, it's done, we can go back to normal, right? But, and then they don't do anything about it, right? And it's just status quo again until it rises and falls again, right? And so that's been the ebbs and flow because until we make the change, it's going to continue to rise and fall, right? And that's the expansion of awareness. And that's why we keep having the, the wars and the systems and everything because it keeps, it's not have been resolved, if that makes sense. Uh, we've not actually made the change that we need to make change. And so if there's no change, then there's no absence of it right it's going to still continue to exist and that's the rise and fall that we keep seeing the ebbs and flow of all these different things with not just in our lives but uh, within the macro level like the external situations that affect us lives because we're part of the whole and we see it and we're viewing it and we're experiencing it on an individual level and how it affects us right and so how it affects us is uh what we're reflecting within ourselves but also here but the dynamic is that we have choice for ourselves, right? So no matter what our external situation is, we have choice in how we are 
going to respond to it. We may not be able to do anything about it, but we have our internal existence that we get to choose no matter what is happening outside. I can still be happy. I can choose to be happy. Um, I can choose to be abundant. I can choose to be loved. Um, I can choose because we can, if not anybody do it for us, we can do it for ourselves, right? And so the external doesn't affect the internal, only if you let it, right? And so that's the main takeaway from this video. But again, as we're having and going forward through the rise <laughs> in the fall, um, the ebbs and flow of everything, you know, just have, know that you have choice. And then when you get the understanding and see things that can be improved or changed, you know, make those, whether it's something you can do in the external world um, on a macro or in just internal, right? You're making change no matter where you're making change because the internal flow and ebb within yourself changes the outside world, right? And so if you were to imagine everybody choosing to be happy, how would the outside world be, right? So, you know, just take a look at that, you know, and so how can you be happy today? How can you um, make change in your life so that it reflects outwardly um, more in a uh, abundance and light way, right, and positive way? And I don't really want to say positive and negative because it's actually the, the fullness and the emptiness of it. So, but the fullness is the positive and then the emptiness is the negative, if you wanted to know, because uh, it's just interchangeable in words. Um, but from the other side, there isn't any. But here we look at it and we use different words to describe it, but a lot of it just means the same thing, right? You have the, the fullness or the emptiness the, the, or the lack, or you can say the negative or the positive, um, whichever you want to choose to use it verbally. Um, but it does, you know, your external doesn't dictate your internal. And it is your internal that will um, affect the outward world, right? Because if somebody's having a bad day and you walk up and you just hold the door for them and you be, you know, smile at them, you know, you, you can change their world. And so you don't really have to do much. You just have to be yourself showing up in a positive way, <laughs> um, you know, and, and that is just your internal reflection. And how do you do that is just by choosing, right? Choose to be happy, right? And that's what you have. That's our power. That's what we have. We only have choice. Right? We can't choose over the external world, but we can choose how we are if reflecting inward, outward by what we're doing. But as we're going forward, um, I feel like I'm repeating. <laughs> um, and, but as we're, we're going through the forward motion here, you know, the, it's not a bad thing. And just want to, I guess they want to make sure that you guys get what, uh, you know, is being talked about and so I think feel like that's why it keeps repeating um because it's important to know you know it, going forward the external world um but with the ups and flow know that even if it's a short period of time that we go through which it's not going to be because time takes time <laughs> it's manifesting right and so it's not going to be instant so as we know and have learned being here that uh, it, it takes time for things to show up. And um, it, you know, if you're manifesting something in your life, like a house or a car, it'll show up. Just know that that's not going to be anything that has to do with your worthiness or um, who you are because everybody can manifest. Um, and it's not based, your external situations aren't based on your who you think you are. But we think we are because if it, a lot of people will determine is what they're saying. A lot of people determine where they are in manifesting as a reflection of themselves. They're not worthy um, or they're not good enough to manifest or they don't have the ability to manifest. And it has nothing to do with that. And a lot of teachers do teach that though, right? Because they say, oh, well, one works one thing, works one person, one works for one person. However, they don't take into consideration there's a time lag just because it doesn't work for you to manifest one thing at one point. There's a time for everything, right? And so where you, it's not that it's not working for you. Um, there's a time that it's going to show up for you. It just not may be just like them or for when they get it, like they are. We can't compare each other to each other, right? Because you may be working on something 
that's going to be similar to what they're getting. Like if you want a thousand dollars, they want a thousand dollars. It's going to come to you when it's time, right? It's going to come to them when they need it, right? So it's not really based on you as an individual. And so we shouldn't base our worth on it or our value or what we can or can't do. We don't come here all individually unpacked. Uh, we all have the ability to do anything and everything, manifesting our intuitive abilities, psychic abilities, channeling. It's whenever we are on the path where we are at that time frame uh, that we're able to maneuver in through it to have that access, right? And so it's not that it's not there for you and you can't use it. We didn't come, you know, nobody's, although we're all individual, let me just put it this way. Although we're all individual, we all have the same abilities, you know, one is not better. Everything is equal, right? But our limiting minds believe that it isn't, right? And that's the timeline. It's the lag of existence and our understanding and awareness of it, right? And so not everybody's going to be in the place of understanding awareness at the same time, right? And so same with what we're receiving or what we're creating. And we're not all going to have it at the same time. doesn't mean that we don't have that ability or we're not worthy of it or capable of it. Right. And that's an illusion. So so a lot of teachers that teach that don't listen. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a false teaching. Right. So um, it's just all in due time when it's time for you, when you've gotten to that place in your evolution. Right. It's all there for you. Right. There's nothing against you or nothing not there for you. Right. We all have the same thing. Um, it's just not going to be at the same time because we're all individual created uh, for the experience of being individual but we're all part of the same fabric, if you will, right? We're all individual pieces, a part of the whole, right? And so everything takes time. There's the lag of it and our experiences of it. And so, for instance, like working from home, you know, I've always wanted a working from home job since, I don't know, I was a teenager, right? 30 years later, I, I get that job that you work from home, right? It's just manifesting. Everything is in your vortex um, for the picking by source when everything is time and when it's needed, right? It may not always be what we want because we don't always get what we want. <laughs> if that was the case, then we would be in a lot worse off than where we are, right? So everything is equal. We all have everything that we need. There's nothing that we don't need and it all comes to us when it is in divine timing. So although we think we have our own timing timeline, only for certain things, and it's based on choice, what are we choosing, right? And that's the only thing that we really have, um, and that's the choice over ourselves, not others. Um, we can influence, but again, that is their choice if they're being influenced or not. So it is our own will uh, that's taking place that we're using to make the choice, right? And so free will is basically your ability to make choice, which you have, right? That's free will. So um, just gonna read a little bit here in the channeling. So I am planning on putting a lot of my channeled writings on the, um, the Patreon um, on there. If you want to join up for that, um, you can actually read the readings um, that I'll be posting there. And of course, they'll be in the books when I get to that aspect of it. but. Um, and then just kind of says, I know this is long, but, um, <laughs> uh, you know, just try to stick with um, what I'm saying here. It'll make sense at some point. <laughs> I know I keep uh, circling back around, but they, they want to make sure that it is um, here that you're getting this. So um, let's see. So it says, um, so to be gentle with yourself now. Um, in this time and moment of existing as the world is about to change and we and all who live in it will be estranged to the way that it is going to be formulating for all that there is coming is war and then peace right and so the upheaval so the war is the upheaval right so we can all see it that's the consciousness rising that I was talking about because you can't make change unless you see it you can't exist in a new way unless you see it right and, and so the problem is a lot of people will rise at these times right and then they'll see but then they won't do anything about it they'll just do state status quo right and so then of course no other option but to 
have another up upheaval about it, right? And that's to make change. That's the purpose of having the rise and fall, the ebbs and flow, right? So is awareness, consciousness rising up above the water, right? And so you can see outside of the that, um, that image that they create for the unconscious and the conscious. And then as you see it, you know, okay, I get it. Now let's make change, right? And that's internal, right? And so the, the war and the peace, so the upheaval and then the rest. You come back down to the coexistence, right? From the rising of the consciousness. It's not that you're rising. And so what happens is a lot of people, they become spiritual masters and teachers to help share their knowledge and wisdom in the world, to bring forth the change. But then with the status quo, if we don't make the changes that we are seeing and sharing in the world from that higher consciousness space and everything stays the same. And so from there, we take that into the new existence moving forward into the next timeline, which then exists and then that affords for another upheaval, right? And so it's the recurrence of the patterns of the timeline that's existent on that level of awareness, right? That's being created, right? And so you always have the upheaval and then the rest. The rest is the status quo, right? Yeah, it's happening, but nothing we can do about it, or I'm not going to make change. I'm not motivated enough to make the change, but I can see it. I understand it, right? And so it's kind of for those who don't act upon it are, is useless, right? <laughs> you know, until they get really into the level of suffering there where they are motivated to make the change, right? So, and that's going to happen on a lot of levels, right? As we're going into this new... Um, period of time, uh, which is why the arising of the consciousness is happening for us all to wake up at this time to make the right choices in this change uh, that's coming up for all changes after the rise and the fall. And so the fall is not a bad thing. It is rebuilding up of it uh, to that which is uh, was no more. So you are on your way to a new way of life, right, which is existing and coexisting by making change in the right way, in the right direction. Right? And so that's for you to see um, about your life on the micro and the macro level um, that's existing. And so be it that which is for all, for the love, not the act of war, but the war is a part of it to that which brings the awareness, right? And so those uh, which will kill many, which is not really about death, to kill is to um, bring their unconsciousness to an end, right? To the rest, right? And so their their arising is the awakening for them to see what they're doing what they're ex experiencing and what they're being a part of right so they can change in their internal ex and external life right and so it's not really about killing it's about bringing an end to the unconsciousness right so but many will be but the uprising of it will kill again not to kill put to death but uh, the ending of the unconsciousness. Um, many that are opposing it is not those who stand for it will. And so it is that which is being a test, which is the test of time, which is the creation of it, right? Where you are in the moment creating it by what you're choosing. And so to itself, in of itself being love, for all love awaits itself to the end of the tunnel. <laughs> and so um, at the end of the tunnel is a time that we're coming into which is the next dimension, multi-dimensional realities and the experience of them coming together, right? And so test of time is the merging of the energies at this time uh, that we have that's moving forward uh, through that. And the timelines that are merging are like the fifth and the third coming back together into a higher vibrational love, which we've talked about the new earth, right? So there's a lot of upheaval when that happens, right? So first you have to become aware of what is going on in the shadow earth, which is the third, right? Third dimension, uh, to bring it back in, in, into the fifth dimension in the world, right? And to bring that back in. But a lot of people, again, um, it, and it's said here with the channeling, you know, for those who are opposed or um, opposing it, you know, they're going to have a lot of struggles, you know, because obviously if you're not going with the current, um, and it's not say to just follow any and all beings, you know, because some people will lead you to a place that you don't want to be, but just have the understanding of heart consciousness um, of what is true versus what's false, the illusion, 
and that's creating an opening for you to see it in which is the truth, right? Source, divine connection, right? Just through the heart being the existence of you, right? Through your your chakras, your energy vibrations, allowing your true self to be forward, right? And not your human version self um, from the past, right? But the end of the tunnel is coming into an end, right? Not just of our existence, but of the merging of the energies, bringing the vibration together to lift up the conscious of everyone, right? And so we can see it to make change. Um, and it's not really to change the earth because the earth is as it is, but it's to live in a different way on the earth, right? Which is the exchange of energy, the vibration, bringing that in here into the world uh, to be a part of it. It's a different world, right? So the, the the new world, the, f the fifth dimension, the reality is to exist upon the world in a new way, right? Which is the experience of having, you know, not just the 3D, but the 5D, right, here. Um, and the, it's also an internal world and an external world because we're choosing and living, right? And so from what we choose, we live. It's experience, right? And a lot of things now, I don't know if you've noticed right now, um, a lot of things are manifesting very quickly, at least for me. Um, a lot of things are showing up more rapidly than usual. Um, so we are at a time like where it's kind of speeding up more. And just the part here, it says, so you are right where you are that you need to be, which is now in the moment of being, to be a part of it now in the timeline. So we see the future being brighter than ever before. So just hold on to all that is being, that is existing unto itself at this time in the timeline. Is not to frighten you, but to be in full awareness uh, that this is a potential outcome that where it comes to town within yourself and without, uh, which is the conflicts, right? Which is the resistance of existing um, to itself in a new way, right? And so when we are against the grain of source, we're actually in resistance to ourselves um, in fielding um, the ignorance of self, right? Because we're trying to hold on to the old ways. Right, and so it doesn't coexist with um, evolution because evolution is forward motion, right? And so when we are holding on to our identities, um, what I believe or what I think um, is and isn't, which is a false illusion, then we create this um, resistance in ourselves and we suffer, right? Because we're not in flow, right, with source. We're against our own grain because we are part of the whole. We're not separate from it. And so we're not allowing ourselves to be in flow of it. And I'm not talking about the guidance of other people, but with your own true self, your own source, your own soul, right? If you're not in flow with love and abundance, you're going against the grain, which is an opposite direction, right? And so the resistance comes and creates illusion, disillusion, suffering, pain, agony, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> whatever comes up for you. Um, but just knowing that you know anyone who is in resistance to it is going to have that, um, and so we just have choice, you know, to let all that old stuff go and then to move forward into the new dimensions um, of reality um, as far as our existence goes, right? Um, which is more about uh, abundance, happiness, joy, and bliss, which is the direction that we're all heading in. And when we're in resistance to it, we're creating more of the shadow the resistance the darkness the suffering right and so people are just happy with holding on to uh what they know is status quo and they don't want to change it because that's who they are they believe that's their identity um and who they are existing as and so if they let that go then they don't have anything because it all crumbles right it, because their identity is built on um different belief systems this this and this and this and this and if it isn't this and they've made themselves so tight that they can't exist outside of that, right? It's like having blinders on, right? <laughs> um, and so they can't see outside of that. And if um, something comes to challenge them or their existence or their belief systems, then, you know, it kind of breaks them down. And then they have no clue how to exist in life, right? <laughs> um, they lose their footing. They don't understand, you know, they feel like... Um, the whole world is crumbling. And that's why a lot of people like to have what it is in their own safe space that they've created around them in the world, right? And so um, it's kind of against them, not really for them, because we're evolving. The timeline is to evolve, right? And not to stay 
status quo, stagnant. And so when suffering comes, it's because we are in that space. That's the resistance that's creating um, for the status quo, right? Um, and then it doesn't serve any purpose um, for the future where we're going. So that's kind of what, I know I kind of went down the rabbit hole and just, <laughs> but um, so that's what it's saying. When the war comes to town, you know, it's, um, not that it's coming into your area, <laughs> like physical, right? Don't always take this as um, uh, per se, like r realism, um, you know, as far as the wording, it, it, when it says come to town, it's basically saying into your awareness, right? Whether it is, it's not your physical town, but within yourself or in the external world, right? And so it can be either, right? But it's the awakening, Right, for you to see and, and along with that comes suffering so not only outside of you but within you to turn it upside down right the great awakening is upon us and we are ready to help and serve all those who are asking for assistance it is with the right and the will of all humans that if they ask it it is given and so it is for that which is the best of humankind uh, to be mindful of its own self what it's asking for and what sh they ask for they shall get um, and so it is either limited or expanded version of itself. And so for all is fair in love and war. So it is that which is the side that you are taking up of it, which you are choosing to be, which comes to you and of itself being to that which is love of itself, not another, or to live in fulfillment of source in its own intention, which is to love all, including one's own self. Thereby it is that which we will leave you now and with hopes and dreams abound for you at this time to fill the wish of being true to yourself. And that was the end of the, the channeling. Um, but yeah, basically that's kind of just the sum of it. Um, uh, what kind of dropped in today, you know, with moving forward and just remember, we, you know, the takeaway basically don't let your external situations um, disturb your peace. Um, and if you have to just walk away or change your thoughts or whatever you need to do or, um, you know, to help you to stay in peace, right, as we're moving forward. Um, but always, and you have choice, right? So that's the other thing you want to take away from. And don't base your, if you're manifesting something or trying to manifest something, don't take that as your worth, right? So your external, I'll read this to you while I'm at it. Your external situation should not dictate your happiness or your worthiness. You are the cause of your own unhappiness in that case by focusing on the external conversion of time, which is the rate that it's experiencing, did the math, which is a delay, not the present moment. And so you, what you are seeing is the absence of it, the void, doesn't mean it doesn't exist, not what you are, it's not what you are, and not what you value as who you are because you're not it, right? And so it's just because it's not there doesn't mean you're not worthy of it and that you don't know how to do it and you're not good at it. Don't base your worth and value on your external situations. It's on its way, right? You just have to trust it, right? That's gonna show up when it's needed, right? Um, but to view it worthy for you, which it is, it is all worthy of you to which has all been given. Uh, to that which you are being, it is just that it is not now in the moment that you don't have it yet to receive it. And so you are not that which isn't receiving. It's just in the process of manifesting <laughs> that's being created, right? It's called the waiting period. And so you have not found anything yet based on your being that is proving that it is that, you, that you're not worthy of it. It's just your idea that you're not worthy of it. So basically, it's just what you're seeing is the creating of it, right? It's the waiting period for it to be evolved. But during that time, instead of keep focusing on it not being there, <laughs> which creates your own suffering, um, go about your way, go about your day, make something else, create something else, and just wait. And then before you know, it'll be there, right? And so um, hopefully that's been helping. I know I kind of went down a rabbit hole and spun around a couple times on all that, but there was, you know, it's a lot to impact. Um, but definitely a lot of important context there that you want to be aware of as we're moving forward. Um, and so if you need any clarity, or I'm sure they'll come back in and make some more clarity on it um, as we move forward, because it seems like that's what's 
what they do is pinpoint certain topics um, that they want to get across um, for you at this time, you know, and allow yourself to be present in of itself and aware of where you are and what you're choosing. Happy journeys.